like it or not, COVID-19 vaccine mandates are here. The federal government, the military, airlines, Walmart are telling their teams, get the jab or lose your job. Here's the latest on where communities land on vaccination rate. 73% of Hispanics, 71% of white, and 70% of black adults now have at least one dose. But when respondents reported their major reason for getting the shot, here's what topped the list. Nearly 40% cited the science of getting six. 40% or so were concerned about healthcare access and around 30, another 40% said it was because COVID had hit home. Only about 20% said it was because they were made to do it. National radio host Joe Madison opened up his phone lines today to find out what people are actually thinking about the vaccine. Here's what folks had to say. Take a listen. Yes, I do believe in vaccinations, but I don't believe in mandatory vaccinations because then it would be akin to rape. When you don't it would it. all come off of it. If you ask me, I would trade being mandated to get a vaccine for a virus that killed thousands, not to just to go to work, but to live. I wanted to call about the governor of New York. Yes. And I think uh, uh, her speech that she gave, I think, uh, I think she was wrong for bringing Jesus and God into the vaccine conversation. God didn't give us this. God, man gave us this, not God. This was created in a lab, laboratory. God didn't give us this. God gave us faith, and he gave us the spirit of him. Joining me to discuss all of this is my colleague from Sirius XM, radio legend, the Black Eagle, Joe Madison, and founder and executive director of Health Justice, Dr. Ani Blackstock. Joe, let's start with you. We just heard one of your callers compare getting vaccinated to getting raped. What did you learn from your callers today on why they are still hesitant on vaccines? Well, I, I certainly learned from that one caller how absurd it is and was. I mean, I, I think what's happening is these anti-vaxxers are, are going from the ridiculous to the absurd. First of all, my response to that caller was very simple. Uh, rape is an act of violence. Now, there's nothing violent about uh, companies or entities mandating uh, vaccines. Matter of fact, it's upheld by the uh, Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court. Rape is not. Uh, but it, what I've learned, quite honestly, is they're running out of excuses. Uh, what I've learned is that you just keep telling the truth. You keep uh, discussing it in a way that is factual. For example, we can count dead people. 1,300 people die every single day, and most of them are not vaccinated. Uh, so you don't have to go around chasing dead people. Matter of fact, in um, Idaho, they're running out of morgue space. Um, and so I think I think we're somewhere over the I'm over the hill here with uh, excuses. They are running out of out of excuses, and uh, that's what I'm I'm doing every day. Just you know, let's just be straight up. The science is there. Uh, people have come up with everything from you know taking horse medicine <laughs> to uh, now. Uh, well, it, all you need is faith. Well, mm -hmm. any minister will tell you, faith without works is useless. Fannie Lou Hamer used to say, you can pray until you faint, but sometimes you just got to get off your knees and, and do what's right. Well, there is, of course, the parable of you know, God sending you help and uh, you know, the person on the island not recognizing that that's what the ships and the helicopters were, what were the connection uh, between God and right. man and help. But Dr. Blackstop, I want to take it away from the, this, this concept of you know, religion and bodily autonomy and bring it back to how we work with the science and those uh, who are unvaccinated. The rates are actually increasing, right? Just from the numbers that we talked about. But we spend so much emotional energy and time 
on the smaller and smaller number of folks that are holdouts. I mean, the, these mandates have not resulted in mass walkouts from industries. And these industries, they're not actually crippling. They're, it's a business advantage now to have an mm -hmm. all vax staff. So, Dr. Blackstock, do we really care about people's feelings anymore? Well, thanks so much for having me on this evening. Um, so we sh we should care and do what we can to continue to keep those channels of communication open with people who are considering getting the vaccine. We know that shaming and demeaning people is not effective. And so I agree with um, with your guest, uh, Mr. Madison, that you know he's there to provide information to his listeners. And as a healthcare provider. I am still in that position where I am trying to, you know, again, remain open-minded, listen to my patients, hear what their concerns are so that I can address them. There are gonna be some people that we can reach and there are gonna be some people, unfortunately, that we can't reach. We have to also realize there's, there's a misinformation campaign that's happening from many different directions where people are being inundated with inaccurate and false information. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to counter that. And the reality is many people don't have um, a primary care doctor, 25% of Americans don't have a healthcare provider that they can go to to talk about, to ask questions. So we all need to do our part in terms of like making sure that we can share that correct information. But I think we have to realize that there are gonna be some folks for whom they're gonna remain resistant and these messages are not going to appeal to them. Right. There's a, there's a point in time where the persuasion period is over and now it's the mandate period and, and some people won't come along. Joe, what do you do, though, with that segment of the population, particularly as many of them are your callers, many of them are our colleagues, but they are now part of the problem? Well, let's talk about our colleagues for a moment, if you don't mind. They're dropping like flies. These folks on the right wing who spent a year and a half they were anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers, anti-distancing, uh, social distancing. And what are we hearing? Now, the general public may not see this every day, but those of us who are in the industry, we, what we're now hearing, and there are some of uh, the uh, news stories, conservative talk show personalities that spent over a year and a half railing against the vaccine, everything from it'll magnetize you to it'll make men sterile. Um, they, now they're, they're giving their deathbed confessions uh, over and over again. Some of these are some of the most popular right-wing talk show personalities. And then the last broadcast is they made a mistake and, they're, and they die, they're dying. I mean, it, it, for a while there, it was like one a week. Um, and so, my goodness, if a person who told you for a year and a half not to do something, and then what you didn't do killed the person who was sending the message, um, I'm, I'm with the doctor. I mean, there's just some people that you're just not going to be able to convince. But what I think is happening is we're seeing reality. We're seeing mm -hmm. him that number is shrinking more and more and i think we just have to be consistent i'm very pleased with le what lebron james did uh today uh in that he said i had some doubts and then but you know what i went ahead and got uh, vaccinated uh and this is what it's really going to take it's it really is all hands on deck and those of us who are influencers those of us like you who have a program I think we just have to uh, just keep telling people that, you know, you do not have, I know you said take faith out of it, but you do not have a God-given right to kill me. You don't have a God-given right to, to uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say you have a God-given right to spread uh, a disease. Dr. Blackstock, what kind of pressure does that put on you and your colleagues when any celebrity with a couple hundred million followers can stand up and say something that immediately gets treated as fact? Yeah, so this is where the challenge comes in because 
you know, basketball players like um, I think Andrew Wiggins on Golden State Warriors, when they talk about their concerns about the vaccine, when they spread information that's not correct, they have a huge platform. They have millions of people who are going to listen to them as compared to maybe the few thousand that might listen to me. And the issue is that um, the vaccine has become so polarized such a polarizing issue where I think many celebrities do not feel safe speaking up and saying that they've gotten the vaccine. So while I think it's encouraging that LeBron James, you know, disclosed that he was vaccinated, he also said that he wasn't going to sort of be out there encouraging others to do so, and he recognized it was a personal decision. I think that's a missed opportunity. I would love to hear from folks like LeBron James sharing accurate information about the vaccine and their personal stories. And I want to see more of that. Um, I think it, it's gonna, it would make our jobs as health care providers a lot easier. Well, that's some of what we want to do, right, is ease the burden of those on the front line who are dealing with the immediate consequences of people deciding not to get vaccinated. Uh, thank you both for joining us tonight. We are actually going to continue uh, this conversation later in the hour, particularly about the responsibility of folks like LeBron James to not just vote present on the issue, but actually stay engaged. Dr. Ani Blackstock, Joe Madison of SiriusXM, thank you so much for joining us tonight.